Hey everyone, the Summerhill Cinema 700 here with a uh, movie dash Blu-ray review of the 1986 film Demons 2, directed by Lombardo Bava. Um, I did a review on the first Demons film. It must have been at least a couple of years ago. I have a, that on my channel. Uh, you can go check that out before you watch this one if you want. Um, so yeah, first time watching this. I had actually watched it with a buddy like over a year ago. But I was so tired at the time, I fell asleep and missed the entire film. Not that it's a bad film, but it was just I was it was it was like five in the morning or something. I needed to sleep, so I missed the whole damn thing. But so I thought, oh, today I'm oh I feel like let's check this out. And uh, yeah, it was definitely enjoyable. If you watched my last review, then you'd know that I'm a really big fan of the the first Demons film. I'd go as far to say as that I think it's one of the best Italian horror films for sure. It's it's great, awesome. Uh, let's get into the story of this one though. Here, so whereas the first movie takes place in a movie theater, in this great big cool theater, this one takes place in an apartment building, um, which is kind of cool. It works in this film. I preferred the theater setting, but it works in this film. So, start of this film, we see that there, we see uh, different people living in this apartment building. We see that there's this lady who lives there with her husband and she's pregnant we see that there's a kid there who's just like at the in his apartment suite by himself his parents are gone and then there's this girl she's having a birthday party and then we see like shots of like the gym downstairs and there's all these people working out and the black dude who was in the first film who was like one of my favorite characters he uh, is back in this film he's working out in the gym he's kind of like the, the personal trainer for everybody i love his character he's just so funny but uh so there's this birthday party going on in one of the apartments. Um, this girl, it's her birthday. Her parents are gone, and she has all these friends over. And then you see this sh this shot, though. This thing comes up on the TV, and you see, like, again, like, different shots of different people in the apartment. You see, like, this family. There's, like, this young girl. And, like I said, this uh, this show comes on the television, and it's, like, the demons, what would happen if they came back? How can we prevent this kind of thing from ever happening again? And anyways, you just see all these different people that have like tuned into the same TV station and they're watching this show that's come on. Next thing you know, the girl who's having the birthday party, she's all pissed off about a lot of different things. So she's just like sitting in her room while everybody else is like enjoying the party. She's watching the station and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, one of the demons is coming through the TV and then she gets scratched, so she becomes one of the demons. And then that's basically where it, the, everything goes to hell. She uh, destroys her party and turns everybody into a demon. And then they basically are running around, raising hell in the apartment. 
And that's basically uh, yeah. So this entire film pretty much takes place. In, actually, I think the whole thing does take place in the apartment, besides a scene that you see of some people in the outside world. Um, so that's basically the story of this film: is just everybody trying to survive in this apartment. Um, the guy who our main characters in this, I'd say the, the we follow the most are the guy and his his uh, girlfriend or wife who is pregnant, and uh, he goes upstairs to try to get a slice of cake because I guess they know the people upstairs. He's going to get her a slice of cake because she's you know, craving food as women do a lot of times when they're pregnant. You crave sweets and stuff like that. So she's like, please go get me a slice of that cake upstairs. So her man goes upstairs to get her a slice of cake and then realize, oh my God, there's demons everywhere. He's trying to get back, uh, but it, it's a while before he gets back. He ends up getting trapped in this elevator with this woman who we see earlier in the film. They're stuck upstairs. All these dead people that have turned into demons. It's coming through the ceiling. It's kind of like Alien. They probably got inspiration for that, the alien blood, the acidic blood melting through stuff. So anyways, yeah, the dog turns into a demon, and that's pretty creepy. The, this, the, the practical effects in this film are very good, much like the first film. Um, I don't know who it was that did the special effects, if it was the same person who did the, the, uh, the ones on the original film, but... They did an incredible job. Uh, some of the effects just look great. Other effects, like I said, the demon that comes out of the kid's uh, like stomach. When you see that scene, it looks really good. But then when it's running around, it looks kind of goofy. That's just it, it almost looks like a gremlin. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's basically is it, you know it, it all takes place in this apartment. There's so many different things that are going on in this apartment, and it's kind of cool because you know this film does take place. It's the whole, the whole film takes place in this apartment, and yet it keeps you um, entertained and in. in really into the film the whole time because you see all these different things happening to different people in the apartment. Again, like I said, there's also people downstairs. So yeah, at this point we have, you know, a kid demon, a dog demon, crazy shit's going on. And then you see these guys working out in the gym and all of a sudden the demons are coming in there. And of course this black dude, I can't remember his name um, in real life, but he's just so awesome. He's just, he's the, he's the one that like takes action and he's like, He's the one that like gets everybody together. They run out. They're tra they're stuck in this parking garage. No one can get out of the apartment. All the doors are locked, similar to the first film where they can't get out of the theater. And uh, yeah, they just can't get out. And he's like, "Get those fucking cars and block the goddamn doors. Make bombs if you have to, and fucking kill them." He's just like, <laughs> he he's he's awesome. He's, I love his character. And uh, so all these people end up getting stuck in his parking garage, all these bodybuilders, and most of them end up dying too. And there's one scene that's really hilarious too. It's like uh, there's this one bodybuilder or whatever, and it's just kind of funny how they just made him kind of like this dumb character. It's like the only thing he's good at is working out. And it's like – and it's funny too because I've always gone to the gym, and I, there's always there are always some guys that are kind of like that, like the guys that are big into steroids. Not all of them, but some of the steroid guys are like that. They're just kind of stupid as fuck. But like – you know, they're good at working out, but they're just like, and it was kind of funny because it was kind of like they were making fun of that in this film because this one guy, he hands, the, the black dude hands him a fire extinguisher and he's like, here, use this as a fucking weapon. And the guy's like, uh, what do I do with this? And he's like, read the instructions. And the guy's like, uh, duh, pull the pin. And it's just like, this is just pretty funny the the way that, uh, I, th I thought that was seen was really hilarious. Um, I guess, uh, there's uh, also another group of people who are supposed to be attending the party. Uh, the girl who was having the party actually didn't want this guy showing up, but this other dude who was at the party called them and invited them, and that's one of the reasons the girl at the birthday party freaked out. So you see a scene on the outside of these people coming to the party, and it's kind of like the first film when you see like those punk rockers. They're like driving to the theater, and you know they're driving around in the car. This time, they kind of have a similar look to them, but they're they're coming, and they're... So you see different scenes of them driving, and the guy's, like, speeding, and he keeps going on. The girl's freaking out in the car. She's going, oh, slow down, you know, like, what's the big rush or this and that? And he's like, I don't want to die in an accident. The guy's like, look, I've never been in an accident before in my life. And he says it, like, three times, and then when they finally get there, he crashes into a fucking car. <laughs> and uh, that scene, when that happens, actually, there's a little bit of static in the film, and it actually is explained in, in this release. It said that there was something wrong with the film at that part, of it, the, and they couldn't restore it. So you, there is one scene where you see a little bit of the, the fuzziness in the, the, the movie. But anyways, that was a really funny uh, scene. They crash there. And then they I don't even think they end up ever making it in the apartment. I can't remember. But anyway, speaking of, like I was saying, the punk rocker characters from the first film, one of them actually uh, – comes back in the second film here 
except instead of being one of the punk rockers, he's actually the uh, like the guard at the apartment, like just the the front desk guy, the security guard. So he reprises his role. So he's in this film as well as the black dude who was in the first film. So it's kind of cool to see some of those characters come back. It's especially funny to see this the, this punk rocker guy now in a in an authority as an authority figure because in the first one he was trying to get away from the police. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the film. It takes, like I said, it takes place in the apartment. Uh, a lot of the stuff reminds you of the first film again. How they're watching, how it all starts by them watching some movie. Whereas the first one, they're watching a movie in a theater. This one, they're watching this show on TV. And yeah, I actually liked it. It, it worked well. The apartment uh, setting, um, the music in the first film. Now I thought was better than this. This one goes more of kind of some synth pop and new wave stuff. There's I know uh, the only songs I recognize were the Smiths, but it says that there's also some uh, some songs by the Cult, who. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of their music, especially their big moves, their big hit "She Sells Sanctuary." But uh, yeah, it says the Smiths, the Cult, uh, Dead Can Dance, Art of Noise, and Peter Murphy, and more. Whereas the first one had more of a rock and metal soundtrack, which I'm more into. I'm a big fan of the band Saxon and Saxon. They had some Saxon songs in the first one. They had some. Uh, was it uh, Accept? And then there was some Billy Idol too. So I like the soundtrack for the first one uh, more. So both of these movies, they both have like songs that are in the movie, and then they have their own kind of the theme music that was actually composed for the films. And I think that this this one here used some of the same music that was in the first one. It's kind of, it's a really cool theme, actually. I'll play that here for a second so you can hear that. Hopefully that worked. If you didn't hear the song, that means I wasn't able to find it on uh, YouTube to play it here. But uh, anyways, yeah, really cool uh, theme music that was done for this film. Again, I think it was the same music that was used in the first film. But yeah, really fun film. Um, we'll talk about the ending for a second. So again, yeah, we're following these two characters, this guy and his uh, girlfriend who is pregnant or his wife or whatnot. And they're both like really kind of like smart people. They're both in like university or whatever. They're... They, they're big into like, uh, I don't know if it's science or whatever. They're reading textbooks. They just seem like smart, educated people. And uh, they're kind of the people that we follow the most through this film. They're kind of like the main characters. And they eventually do escape. They have to go up to the rooftop and then they rappel down the roof. While they're rappelling down the roof, there's this scene where there's this, this demon. I think it might be the girl who was originally at the, the party. Um and she's like, they're because they're, they're rappelling down the side of the the apartment building to get away, and she comes scaling down, and it's really really creepy scene. Um, so that was really cool. And anyway, so at the end, they end up getting away, and it was more of a happy ending to the than the first film. The first film, you know, they're in the they're on the jeep and they're getting away finally, and they're with these other people. 
And then I can't remember what exactly it is. She turns around at the camera, and then her eyes are glowing like she's a demon, and then they just throw her off, and she's dead, and it's like, okay, they're off into the sunset without her. <laughs> like, you know, they finally made it, this guy and uh, this girl who he loves, and now she's fucking dead. But uh, whereas this one, at the end, you just see that they, they get away. She ends up delivering the baby, and it's like a happy ending where they just you just see them they finally got out of the building and you just see them walking off and you see like some buildings in the background they're in a city somewhere speaking of which i wonder where the city was the city that this was filmed in i'll have to find that out but no it was a nice happy ending and i honestly i thought to god i was i thought i i, I kind of know what's going to happen she's going to give birth but it's going to be a demon's going to come out of her but it didn't end up happening which you know that would have been kind of like a cool way to end the film but at the same time like i don't really want to see that i kind of I, I kind of wanted a happy ending with this one you know if you're gonna have a second film you want another like depressing ending I, a lot of people would but i kind of wanted a happy ending i wanted them to have the baby and stuff like that i don't know i just yeah it, it worked well for me i like the ending of this film more of a happy ending so yeah that was that's pretty much all there is to say again it mostly took place or it all it, all of it took place in this apartment um the music was good again like i said i preferred the soundtrack to the original but there was still some really good music i still love all that uh that new wave style music the smith stuff is really good it worked in this film so that was fun and uh again the practical effects i, I have to find out if it was the same visual effects artist who worked on the first film but the the practical effects in this were were great fantastic um again yeah having that uh score to not the uh the music that was added to the film, but the music that was composed for this film was really cool. So yeah, I, I like this film. I'm probably going on too much now. It was fun. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I do prefer the first film. You know, out of 10, I'd probably give the first film a 9, if not maybe a 10. This one, I'd probably give a 7, maybe even an 8. It was really fun. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, good film. If you watch the first one you, and you haven't seen this one, I definitely recommend checking it out. The Blu-ray here is from Synapse Films, and uh, they put out the first one, too, on Blu-ray. Depending on where you live, I think this is for Region A users. I think Arrow Video may have put out the first and second one. Not 100% sure. Now, as far as special features goes, you only get... You get a trailer, I think. That's a, that's it, unfortunately. It'd be nice to have some more special features. I was hoping to see some stuff with the cast and find out a bit about them. Um, but yeah, it has a running, minute, a running time of 92 minutes. So, you know, it's a nice... Uh, Runtime. I like films that are between like an hour and 20 minutes to like an hour and 45 minutes for like a horror film. That's kind of the perfect runtime for me. That's one thing that I think is that they do wrong with films now is that they're too long. Although some of the horror films are, they keep to this length, but a lot of movies just in general now are just, they're too long, I think. Um, but yeah, again, this was, this was fun. This was definitely a fun uh, flick. Definitely recommend this one. Uh, yeah, it's a great Italian horror film. If you're just getting into Italian horror film, this, the, the Demons and Demons 2 would definitely be good ones to start with because some of the other ones really take a a uh, certain crowd uh, to get into them. You know, it's, it's a... What's the word? It's a... I don't know. They're geared towards a certain audience. Not They're definitely not for everybody. Whereas I think like Demons and Demons 2, especially the first film, anybody could get into them if you're a horror fan. Um if you're not a horror fan, yeah, you might want to skip them, but uh, I don't know why you'd want to watch uh, films like this anyways if you weren't into horror. Anyways, I'm going kind of blabbing on now. That was Demons 2, 1986. Let me know what you think of this film. Are you a fan of this movie? Um, and which one do you prefer? Do you prefer this one or the first film? Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. So thank you very much again for watching, and we will see all of you next time. Take care.